Welcome in this video I'm going to show you how to find a harmonic conjugate of the following function. This is in the context of complex analysis. So I have u equals 2x and then here let's see negative 2xy and what I want to do is find a function v that is the harmonic conjugate of that. So I'm going to use the Cauchy-Riemann equations for that purpose. Let me just write them down. I'll show you a way to remember them that basically the relationship is that f sub y is equal to i times uh, f sub x. And that is so because f, remember, is just this function u plus vi. So for any basically value of u and v, the function f is just a complex number, so that's why the derivatives are also just complex numbers, which means there's this kind of relationship where f sub y equals to i multiplied by f sub x. So this is a good way to remember them so I'll leave confirming that this actually stores the Cauchy-Riemann equations correctly as an exercise to you. Let me show you how to find the harmonic conjugate step by step. Expanding this equation here essentially, I'm going to call this let's say 1, right? Will give me in the terms of individual components that u sub x equals v sub y. Equation 3 also, I'm going to number all my steps here. So equation 3 will say that basically u sub y equals negative or v sub x. So at step four, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to call this step zero right here, the given equation u. I'm going to differentiate that with respect to x. So I'm going to have that u sub x is equal to 2 minus 2y. So 2x differentiated is 2. Negative 2xy differentiated is just 2y negative. Now I'm going to continue. So I've got this, and I know this is equal by... 2 here to v sub y. So what I can say is that v sub y is also equal to 2 minus 2y, but now I have v, the derivative of it, with respect to y. That's getting me close, because at 6, what I can do after that is write v equals 2y, so integrating 2 to get 2y with respect to y, that's the integration here, minus y squared, and then plus, and then here I have to be really careful, put like a phi of x. The reason is that if I take 6 and I differentiate the right side term by term with respect to y, it will get back to step 5 where it's just 2 minus 2y. The derivative of phi of x with respect to y is 0, so it would go away. The derivative of y squared would be negative 2y, the derivative of 2y would be 2. So let's continue here. I'm going to go on to step 7. So step 7, take a look. Step 7 says, look back at step 3 u sub y equals negative v sub x. So at step 7, let me fit that better in here, I'm going to make use of uh, the step 3 basically. I can find the left side of step 3 u sub y from the original. So I'm going to have that u sub y is equal to, well, differentiating 2x makes it go away, differentiating negative 2xy makes it negative 2x. Step 8, take a look. You see step 3 has u sub y. We have that at step 7 right now. Step 6 has the function v, but the connection between u sub y and negative vx is at step 3 right here. So that's, I have to take one more step, in other words. Take a look. Go back here down. I'm going to call this, say, 6b. I'm going to write v sub x. Why am I writing that? Because at 3, I have the relationship u sub y, which I know, but I don't know the negative of v sub x. So I have to find it. So go back to 6, and I'm going to do the 2y differentiated with respect to x is 0. Negative y squared differentiated with respect to x is also 0. But phi of x differentiated with respect to x is phi prime of x. We don't know the function phi. So when you differentiate at 6b, all you can do is the symbolic form of the derivative. But now if you look at it very carefully, look back at step 3 here u sub y, well that's a known piece of information. vx is a known piece of information, so that's the connection that we needed. So go back to step 8, I'm going to proceed as follows. I'm going to take negative 2x, which is really here, let's see, that's uh, this, right, 3, the left side of 3. I'm going to set that equal to, well it's got to be equal to the negative of v sub x, but v sub x is step 6b. So I'm going to put the following, negative from here, times v of x, which is in this context actually just v prime of x. So let me slow down here. What I'm doing is the following. I'm going to call this star. 
So I'm setting the star equal to the box right here. Okay, if you need symbols to keep track of things better. At step nine, I can now divide negative one from each term. That's going to give me that 2x equals phi prime of x. At step 10, what I can do is anti-differentiate with respect to x. That's going to give me x squared plus k equals phi of x. The reason is 2x anti-differentiate is x squared, and then also there's a constant you have to attach when you anti-differentiate. Or if you like, if you went back from 10 to 9, the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of the constant would be 0, it would go away. So now what I can do is put all of this together as follows. Remember that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take step 6, which is 2y minus y squared plus phi of x, and I'm going to, in step 6, replace phi of x with the expression from the left side here of step 10. So I'm going to put that v equals 2y minus y squared plus x squared plus k. And this is the harmonic conjugate of this function u back at step 0 that we wrote down. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.